Henderson's Aerial Steam Carriage of 1843. This aircraft might never have flown, but it certainly captured my imagination when I first saw it in 2006. And at least the fuselage is streamlined. And in the mid 1800s, the belief in flight without the assistance of a balloon was dismissed as completely mad. So when Somerset lace manufacturer William Samuel Henson floated a bold new scheme to find the world's first intercontinental airliner in 1843, he faced considerable ridicule. Formed with his friend John Sterling Fongel, the Aerial Transit Company was intended for conveying letters, goods and passengers from place to place aboard a steam-powered airliner. To tempt financial backers, fanciful engravings were published in various magazines depicting this splendid machine soaring above the Egyptian pyramids and other exotic locations. The fatal flaw in Henderson's imaginative project was that his aerial steam carriage only existed on the drawing board and if it had been built it would have never have flown. No steam engine could have been at once light enough and powerful enough to lift the aircraft and its passengers into flight. And yet the aerial steam carriage was an amazing sophisticated design. It was a monoplane, its wire braced wings formed by main spars and ribs covered with strong oiled silk. The steam engine drove two pusher propellers on the wing's trailing edge. The pilot, accommodated with the passengers in an enclosed nestle, was to control the aircraft via a movable tail and rudder. Unable to raise the necessary cash, Henderson soon abandoned his aviation project. But the seeds of a great idea had been sown. Heavier than earth flying machines are quite impossible. Lord Kelvin, President, Royal Society, 1895. Specifications. Power plant, one 25 to 30 horsepower, two cylinder, Henderson steam engine, wingspan 50 feet, wing area 4,500 square feet, length 84 feet 9 inches, gross weight 3,000 pounds, cruising speed unknown, accommodation one pilot, passengers and cargo. The amazing thing about his idea is that number one, it looks like an aircraft. It of course has all the features of an aircraft. Amazing that he even thought of propellers back then. And of course the fuselage looks like a bath, but it's streamlined. Another thing that I don't understand is some of these other aircraft that I'm looking at, when I say aircraft, they're actually gliders, but they've been built in the 70s to see if they really would fly. But nobody has ever built a replica of this to see if it would fly. And it does make me wonder if seeing some of these paintings gave the Wright brothers inspiration. But I can tell you that a French railroad engineer, a very successful French railroad engineer who moved to America, Charles Nutty, I hope I've said that right, he did give inspiration and help to the Wright brothers. His pilot and friend made several attempts and very successful flight attempts with their glider in August of 1896 and he helped the Wright brothers and he was quite a renowned aviation pioneer he wrote a book to do with it as well and I'm actually looking at a weird aircraft right now that looks like a bat with two propellers in front and this particular machine will appear on this channel very soon but it actually says it was claimed to fly at an altitude of 984 feet. Now this is in October 1897. But we haven't read that part of 
this particular book, so I don't know what happened. But it looks like the Wright brothers certainly weren't the first to fly. They obviously were the first to fly with powered flight. But, uh, yeah, there was a good few people before them who actually took to the air. So quite amazing. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with that thought now. And there's going to be another five-minute history-ish next week about another weird and wacky aircraft from July of 1894. Just be aware, though, that aircraft never took off, but it was an experimental aircraft that ran along rails. <laughs>